this is basically what we what we call intentional media message content, and this is something I developed and that I work with with my private clients for uh, for some time now. We really go into detail. What what can we share? And Carissa, you can speak a little bit to this, right? Uh, what when we did this for yours as how can I talk about what my story is and what my anecdotes are and examples and case studies that would sound right for that person that now they want to take me up on my offer? What can I say? What do they need to hear and believe so that the next thing after the interview is over is, oh my goodness, I have to follow her. I have to opt into their email list, right? So that's the intentional media message content. But a couple of considerations around this if the news media that you're going after is news-based, like for instance TV or radio or newspapers, being intentional with your content will have to do with making yourself newsworthy and offering commentary around what they're already interested in and then loosely tying in your expertise into that. Whereas if it's a how-to kind of thing, like for instance you're writing an article for Entrepreneur Magazine or you're being interviewed for it or Forbes or something like that, the top five secrets to well converting Facebook ads, that's a how-to, that's not really a news-based thing. So think about what is the outlet do I'm, that I'm going after, what kind of uh, platform do they have, do they have to share something that is very, very timely and I'll think about my content ahead of time based on that or is it something that is more evergreen and I have to give something that is how to actionable piece of advice that people can really go and implement right away. And speaking about influence, even if they were not to implement it, if you make it very easy and simple and they get it, they can see in their mind's eye that, okay, this is how I would do it. And so therefore they will feel like, yeah, I see how I would be getting results from you. So even if they didn't actually go and do it right away, they will still have that same level of trust and rapport with you as long as the advice that you're giving is very, very clear. Make sense? Okay. The other thing that you need to think about is to balance the stories and the how-to. So especially with podcasts, you have so much time. You have 20 minutes or a half hour or an hour. And podcasters are usually not professionally trained journalists. So they will be asking questions because either they pre-wrote them and they're asking pretty much the same question from everybody, or they will have a very organic conversation like, AJ, you have a great po podcast with online super coach, and you ask people and have a very organic conversation with them. But you also know how to ask the questions in a way that positions them well. Not everybody is like that, though. So your job as a guest when you're going to do a podcast interview is to think through that intentional media message content. Think about how can I connect with my audience in an emotional way to speak about what's going on in their heads, what are, what are their core desires and frustrations and dreams, and how can I connect to that on an emotional level through stories that have the same emotional undertone. It doesn't have to be a business story. It doesn't have to be a, necessarily something that relates to that, but you can turn it into an example that this is why I'm passionate about what I developed here, because I never like to feel embarrassed, or I never you know, like to have that kind of an issue, lack of self-confidence, or whatever it may be that you know that your audience is dealing with. So when a podcaster asks you questions, you never want to dodge any questions. You really want to answer everything. But just keep in mind that based on their personality type, they might be asking all kinds of how-to questions, exactly tell us what to do, or they want to know your journey as an entrepreneur, and they want to know your story and how you came to do what you do. And in every audience, there will be people who relate to the stories because we are human beings, and they want to hear that. And there will be also people who, who are like, okay, but tell us what to do with it. And if you just stick to the stories and you don't give any how-to, it's just intellectual entertainment. They don't know what to do with it. But if you only give how-to, you're going to lose them because you're not sharing any stories that they could relate to. So you want to have a balance of the two. Also, be sure that you prepare. It's so easy and so tempting to go and, and oh, I'm just going to do an interview. I'm just going to have a chat with them. But then you don't see the results. And part of it is this is not being prepared in terms of what does that audience need to hear and believe so that they can trust me, so that the next logical step is to take me up on my freebie. Okay, so think about positioning from their perspective. What would help them the most to say yes to you and to your offer?